Hello there. If you are choosing this video, that means you have gone a little bit further into one-step equations and are interested in something a little deeper um, than what we're offering currently. I'm assuming that you have uh, read this piece, the part about equations, and have maybe looked at some of the examples to see like what your teacher would uh, require to show each step. And uh, it's, it will help you in the long run. I'll show you some examples why in a moment. I'm going to do a couple of these on the, the ones that are unfinished and just kind of show you some options and what most of your math teachers will require for, to show your thinking. I'll do start with number three. Negative one-third equals x minus three-fourths. In order to isolate the variable x, we need to undo what was done. Three-fourths was taken away. Let's add three-fourths. And I show that by writing just below an addition of three-fourths on both sides of the equal sign. When I do that, minus three-fourths and plus three-fourths on the right side cancel. That's my goal. And then I'm looking for negative one-third plus three-fourths. Now I'm going to do some side work over here because... Uh, well, I'll write it here that x equals negative one-third plus three-fourths. I need to show my work because now I need to add those fractions, and that means I need a common denominator. That means that a negative one-third is also negative four-twelfths, and three-fourths is nine-twelfths. That's equal to x. I'm just going to put a comma or maybe uh, an arrow that says that means 5 twelfths equals x. And if you want to write it x equals 5 twelfths, that's okay too. It's always good and probably customary to put a box around your answer. And you can always go back and check to see if when substituted back into the equation, that value satisfies the equation. Number five. Ooh. That's uh, decimals. Some number minus 8.5 equals negative 2.1. Don't guess. Do algebra. Add 8.5. Do the, un the inverse operation of what was done to x. It was subtracted. I'm going to add it. And that means when I have on the left side... I put a slash through that to see that negative 8.5 plus 8.5 leaves me with x all by itself, the isolated variable. That's what you want to do. And then on the right side, negative 2.1 plus 8.5. Now I'm going to write it as 8.5 minus 2.1. There's different ways to represent it. You could have said negative 2.1 plus 8.5. Now I'm going to do some side work here. Or in, in, if you can do it on your own or in your head to take 8.5 minus 2.1, oh, that's going to be nice because I don't need to borrow anything. It's going to be positive 6.4. There's an example that has decimals. Another one here, this number 10, x minus 6, or sorry, x plus 6 equals negative 3. Yes, maybe in your head you know that that's going to be negative 9. Negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3. But for right now, the, the job is to show your thinking. It's not really to get to the right answer. It's to show your thinking and to communicate the operations needed to happen in order to isolate x. x is equal to negative 3 minus 6. To subtract is to add the opposite. So I think of negative 3 minus 6 as negative 3 plus negative 6. That means x is equal to negative 9. Okay, one more. Number 21. Yeesh. Fractions. Some number was multiplied by negative 7 eighths to get negative 21 sixty fourths. Okay. When in doubt, I'm going to divide it out. I can divide by whatever was multiplied by x. So I know that I can divide by negative 7 eighths. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. 
And that makes it nice and easy on the left side because a negative 7 8 divided by negative 7 8 isolates x. It's just x times 1. Now on the right side, I'm looking at negative 21 64 over negative 7 8 To divide by a fraction means I uh, take the reciprocal of the bottom fraction and multiply by the, the top. And I know also that a negative divided by negative is positive, so I'm going to leave uh, those negatives knowing that I'm really going to be looking at 21 64 times 8 sevenths. I know the answer is going to be positive. Uh, instead of multiplying across, look to see there, if there's any common factors, like 7 will go into 21 3 times, 8 will go into 64 8 times. We're looking at 3 eighths. x equals 3 eighths. Now, as a, a, an algebra teacher, I want to make sure that if you say, oh my gosh, I could have done that so much easier because, oh, look at this. I know, I'm going to switch colors. Negative 7 eighths times something gave me negative 21 64 I know for sure that this number has to be a 3, so negative 7 times 3 gives me negative 21, and this denominator has to be 8. I know that answer is x equals 3 eighths. Don't just write it. Show your thinking. If you want to communicate it this way, maybe add some words in there, or just say, oh, I can, see, I can see that this fraction times something else yields this fraction. Then communicate how you moved to the final answer. Okay, not to seem overly pedantic, but just want to share with you why we ask you early on to show your steps and to unequivocally, <laughs> unequivocally show your work like demonstrated above. It's better in the long term. Here's why. These are all one-step equations that sometimes you can do in your head. Here is an example of a, a three or maybe four-step equation that starts with terms on variable terms on both sides, and then you have to make a one, two, three moves to get to the final answer. Here's another one that utilizes the distributive property on both sides and something called distributing the negative sign. So that takes several lines to get through. When you get to trigonometry or pre-calculus, here's another example of good quality communication that shows how a trig equation can be solved. And in this case, I think there are three different answers and you'll even need to use a special right triangle to show how those answers came. 